Live. Tonight we are twisting up a caddis pattern and a popper. Now the popper is called a pandemic, but it can be used in any size. Um, so you can go monster or small. Let's see what's going on here with our live stream. We got the chat running, which is cool. Um, anyways, yeah. So it's going to be two really fun patterns. We're going to be using uh, some of these uh, Flyman fishing heads. I like them nice and soft. Seems to do a good job for me. So, and give you guys a quick up close look at the uh, pandemic here. And it's just a real basic popper. Not a ton to it. Just real simple, quick tie, catches fish. Ahoy, Aaron. I'm the loon guy. You got it. Um, first pattern I'm going to be tying tonight, though, is the uh, Chronic Caddis. You guys can see it. Whoosh, little tiny guy. Um, but uh, we'll sneak up close and personal. Scott, how's it going, man? Welcome and hello. Let's see. Nope, other way. Yep, that way. So, <clears throat> what uh, I'm going to be throwing in the vise first is a uh, Daiichi 1120. It is a scud style hook um, and a 1 8 inch tungsten bead. Um, I do love the tungsten bead on this, even though it's an emerger pattern. So let's get centered and we'll enhance. And then we'll recenter again because that's how we operate here. Okay. Man, it's crazy. It's so light out right now. It's absolutely wild for me. Um, I can get done with this and go out and drift on my drift boat, which is pretty rad. Um, so this is just a 140 denier thread. You can see I'm keeping it kind of flat. Not trying to do too much uh, building yet with it. Um, for the first pattern, I'll be using micro scissors. Bernard, hello from the Netherlands. Russell, it is Thursday. The time flies. I'm glad we've got that cleared up. So, um, I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, Senyo Predator wrap, and this is a, a gold olive barred black with a UV, um, and this is actually going to make up our, our body for this fly. So randomly, Predator wrap works its way into, I would say, 60% of my patterns now. Hey, Ebers! Nope, Friday. <laughs> it's probably Friday in the Netherlands, like 2 a.m. or something crazy like that. My brother lives in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, so I should know the time difference. And what I'm going to do is simply tie this in up top, and we're going to wrap back, and then come back forward again. And I'm using white because I want this fly to have a little bit of glow. Um, so you're going to get a little bit of coloration from inside and I'm just going to build a nice progressively tapered body. And if you guys noticed, I'm not on the loon bobbin right now and it still squeaks. So it's actually a Vivas problem. Old squeaky Vivas. So, Rob, hey, how's it going? 3 a.m. Perfect. See, I was close. Not 100% there, Bernard, but I try. But I try. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and start my 50D um, because that's what I like to finish this fly with. out of my way. Hey Sam, how's it going buddy? 
Welcome and hello. Okay. Dropping stuff. I love dropping things. It's just like my specialty, I feel. But that's alright. So I'm going to take, and this is about three or four strands of that Senyo Predator wrap. Um, this would work really well also if you're tying European style nymphs that you wanted to have a nice hard body. Hey Craig, good evening. Squeak is life. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm just going to wrap it in and then wrap back over. So I leave about an eighth of an inch at the most. Keep trying to clear the desk of things as I'm done with it. Never seems to work out right. Oh no. Alright. I'm grabbing the flow. I knocked it off. Like every time I knock something off the back side of the desk, it just happens. It's life. You guys scare me away, and then I come back. Actually, I completely cured the tip this time, so I think I was replacing it. So I'm going to take a little bit of flow, and the reason I want that white underbody is so the green doesn't darken down with a darker thread. And we're going to be able to take that. But if you put like a .15 non-lead wire in there, it would be pretty awesome too. So I'm going to go ahead and cure that. So we've just really done first coat, then a cure. But the way that it works out with how modeled the Predator wrap is, you get a, uh, a very segmented random uh, look. And what I'll do is I just darken the back down ever so slightly, as you can see there, um, using a, a Copic. And this is called Copper. It's E18 is its color code. And you, you can omit that step if you want, but I just kind of like that light to dark transition there. And because we did it over the UV resin and not on the actual material itself, a lot of that translucency and that color variation, I don't know if you guys can see that in there, but you're still getting uh, dark spots and stuff like that. How long do I go before I swap batteries in my light? Um, that's a really tough question. Uh, it, it just depends on the light. Um, I might have more than one, so I've never really kept track. But uh, I typically switch when I feel that the UV resin isn't curing as quickly. So... And I also like to use rechargeable batteries. So I, I find that to be pretty nice as well. Um, but with LEDs, it's really tough just because of their efficiency to tell when they've become, you know, lower in voltage. So we're going to go ahead and put in some caddis green ice dub it's ICE 49 Matt Evers has obviously done more scientific research on it for me <laughs> um, several hundred flies and actually you know if you're using rechargeables those rechargeables you know have a certain cycle um, how many times they can be charged and discharged so you know, you can uh, you can kind of uh, gauge it that way as well. So you probably get years out of them too. Um, so this is a black CDC, and I'm just going to use this for actually. Hold on, timeout, reverse. Reep, 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 reep. What I'm going to do is tie the fly right, which is always really nice. 
Um, and this is just a little bit of India hen right here. And you can see, um, whoop, puppy. My puppy like loves to bark at everybody. Which is kind of a derelict in that sense. So these look pretty big for these wing buds, but we're going to pull them in and shrink them down. I'll show you that here. Several hundred flies. Ebers, you tie a lot of flies. You probably even possibly use the UV resin more than I do. So all I do is once I get them in there, I'm going to go ahead and pull those through and it shrinks them down and kind of spreads them out into a cool little wing bud scenario. Now we'll tie in the CDC. And I'll just create like a full area that I'll be able to work in. Whoops. Usually my CDC doesn't break on me like that. We'll do a few wraps of CDC, creating some leggy collar movements. Some days. 87 dozen. Aaron's got the official number. Now what uh, what concentration of UV resin are you using? Like are you using a you know a gram or what's your how do you come to that number, Aaron? Are these size 14s, 18s? What do you got going, man? So So I'm going to take two pieces of, that's actually three, of bronze mallard. You can use a dyed mallard. I just like them to be mildly off-colored. Um, obviously, naturals vary, and this is going to become our antenna. Once we trim that off, we're going to go into some, uh, we use that, that caddis, whoa, crazy, caddis green, and if anybody has some guesses, we're going to use the Ice Dev Peacock Black for the front of our collar. I like to use these binder rings. I feel like I can just kind of get my finger in there and get a nice pinch of dubbing pretty easily. And we'll go ahead and whip finish. You can adjust the lengths of your antenna just to meet your own criteria. And uh, hey, Eugene, what's up? <laughs> Did I miss the poppers? Nope, not yet, man. Poppers are next. I can tie fast, but not that fast. So I'm just going to put a dollop of UV thin up here. That's kind of kind of help everything stay back. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and just pick out this dubbing just a little bit so there's even more scraggle than the CDC creates. And yes, my fingers are dyed green from airbrushing. Ran out of airbrush juice. My Copic ran out. So that's just my little chronic caddis. I tie it in orange and cream. Um, in cream, I just use uh, kind of a natural. Uh, it's like the natural pearlescent. It's not or the the barred uh, UV, and then uh, 
I actually used this light Cahill colored. Uh, it's light, ca oh, light camel. Um, <laughs> it's the one I use for light Cahills to kind of color it up. And uh, I just go from there. So, orange, cream, black, green, probably a size 10 to 12 all the way up to uh, an 18 or 20 would be sufficient for you. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Alrighty. And, uh, uh oh, not keeping up. Hey, Ron, how's it going? Um, so what I did is uh, I took my bodkin and really I just kind of squeeze a, th a hole through here and I kind of skewer this guy. Um, you can you can cut them, but it's just not necessary. Um, they slide pretty easily over hooks. So I figure out where I want my fly to kind of terminate. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some start my wraps there, and this is for the bass popper. What I'll do is I'll put a marker reference down. I'll color that with red or a little bit of a. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Uh, what jaws do I have on my Regal? These are the stainless jaws. I find that they work for 90% of my stuff unless I'm tying GT flies or really, really big pike flies. Um, I'll tie down to like a size 20 on them and I don't have any issues. So I just threw down a thread base on, on here. It's not uber necessary, but I find that when I'm gluing to it, I like to use. Uh, the Loctite super glue, it's a gel control. Pop and lock. <laughs> so, and what I do is I really just put the glue, kind of just wiggle it around all around the front. I don't put any, I don't put glue back here. Um, my philosophy behind that is because I'm pushing this head up and over. and moving it all around. So we're going to work backwards just a little bit here. It's going to be, you know, right in line with about the barb. It doesn't need to be too crazy. And I'll just throw a thread base in. Now, before I put my first material on, um, I've noticed that production poppers seem to have some slide right here. Um, it's kind of like the popper shuffle. Not a huge fan. I don't know why they do that. I don't think they're, you know, the materials just kind of slide off. Um, and it's probably due to short bites, stuff like that, but. I'm going to take some uh, chartreuse ice dub, which is ICE 54, and I'm going to wrap that down in there really secure. Next up, I'm going to do a little uh, crystal flash in a medium brown. This is uh, KF228. What I'll do is I'll half that over the thread, and it's about four to five strands. So you're going to end up with about eight out the back. And 
then I just want to trim them. Cool trick to keep them flared is I'm going to take flow and I'm going to coat that up into the body and then I'll cure it and now they'll no longer foul. The crystal flash will kind of stay out there. It's going to support the feathers and help them swim too. So this is a good trick to use like on your bait fish patterns. But you can see now as it pulls it's going to it's going to kick back and forth. Um, and kind of flare these in guys just a little bit if you wanted. It doesn't really make a huge huge difference as far as the uh, fishability of the pattern. I like to use a little bit of craft fur. I think it has a cool swimming motion and it almost has a static motion behind it as well. Scott asks, what size thread am I using? This is a Vivas uh, 50D the GSP. So it's a very fine GSP thread and uh, does a really good job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out all of this. This is all the, uh, the under fluff. Um, from my popper. And I'm going to be left with three of the lengths here and what I do is I, I kind of flare it out just a bit so I can get a nice flat tie-in point. And just like with real hair I'll take a few soft wraps and then really kind of flare it out. So you can see you kind of add quite a bit of bulk there. And I'll just wrap that forward again. I don't want it to slide. And the popper I tied was on a smaller body. Obviously you guys can see that. Um, I feel that like these bigger ones are just going to show up. So plus I have a good friend who wants to go bass fishing. So I offered to tie him some some poppers. So I'm going to select some grizzly saddles. Um, I like grizzly; it just has a good uh, good overall look. And I'm going to have them kind of pop, you know, outwards. As, as far as the spline or curvature of the feather, it's going to be going out. You can add yellows and you know various colors into these as well. Um, this happens to be a pre-done up uh, green head, but uh, feel free to use like the Copic airbrush system to dial them in a little bit more. You know, you can adjust your leg lengths in pretty good. I'm going to go about half inch past my flash. And you're going to get a really nice splay. That dubbing bump is going to keep those legs out looking like a resting frog. And uh, kind of get you dialed in properly. I'm also going to add a few uh, grizzly olive. And these guys actually all, most well most of them all, came out of this, these Grizzly Half Saddles. Um, quite a few decent feathers in there um, for legs. Just wants to roll. Let's see if I can't get him to unroll for me. There we go.
Oops. There we go. My secret little trick is at the end here, you're going to be left with kind of this fluff off of one of them. And I'll just go ahead and build my collar for my popper with this fluff. You know, it kind of gets a little bit marabou-y. I don't mind it. It does actually pretty, looks pretty slick in the water. You can tighten it up, squish it over if you want. It's not really gonna gonna hurt or aid you in any way. So now we're left here with a really nice, I'll zoom out just a hair wider. You're left with a pretty nice profile, and you can see the crystal flash and the dubbing bump um, are both going to help to um, expand. Craig, absolutely. Always take requests, man. I got strapped for time. We were fishing this week, so I didn't quite remember what I was supposed to be doing and I panicked and tied poppers and caddis. <laughs> Scott says that popper will be excellent fly in the bayous. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll show you a good trick here at the end um, with with uh, for bayous and lily pads. Let me grab it, I'll show you. What my big game is here. Oh, there we go. See where's my zap or my crazy glue? So I'm gonna put a dab of eye glue in, even though these eyes have stickers and such. Um, you can use the uh, the dragon eyes or any other eye. This size head takes a four mil eye, so this is a medium flyman fishing double barrel. Hex nymphs, sure. Caitlin, hello. Hey Nate, Evers, cool, right on. So if you guys follow us on Instagram, I've been tasked with random mat fly tying fun on Instagram Live. I did one last night. This is a uh, our UV uh, fin fly finish, and I'm just filling the eye sockets with it. It's not the final. May I request more poppers? <laughs> well, we might not get to them for a while. I like to try to mix it up, buddy. So now that we're all glued in, you can see I, I dome quite a bit out as well. All right. So now we have some some leg work to do here. And if you notice that hook has like kind of a, a kink to it, it's so it allows you, in my opinion, in my brain at least, it allows you to, uh, oops, where's my needle at? It allows you to uh, miss that section when you're tying your popper. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this uh, crafty girl needle thing through for some sort of sewing project. I use them for extended bodies and leg pulling. And I'm going to take three pieces of like Life Flex or Super Floss, whatever you guys have at your local store. And I put that through the eye of the hook. They make a really cool tool for this. I'm just not that cool. So once I get them through there, I'll just go ahead and half. Crappie fly. 
All right, I'll tie you something cool for crappie. Hex nymphs and crappie flies. Man, I've never tied a crappie fly, but I'm pretty sure I know what they eat, which is a lot of things, and I'll make it happen for you. So I'm going to take another fresh piece of, you know, this stuff here. And you don't have to do this. This is a kind of an extra step that's fun. Depends on what you want the fly to do. But I tied just a simple shoelace knot twice. I believe it's called an overhand knot for those of you who are into knots and tying things up. You thought I was cool? I don't, I've never thought that of myself ever. Like, kind of nerdy, boring, stuff like that. I come, I think of that a lot. So, we're gonna go ahead and tie some hands on this guy. And once it's undone, we'll go ahead and just trim it. Then we can trim up his hands. So it kind of gets a really cool, realistic looking profile. And we'll just go to work with some markers. I've been on a Airbrush Copic Rampage lately. And I have like all but completely exhausted two of the big Copic cans. And destroyed pike fly. <laughs> Thanks Nate. <laughs> so this is uh, that light camel or as I called it the light Cahill. So I'm going to just start a progressive shading on this pattern and once I once I get in there I'll I'll just kind of smear it. This is the uh, this is kind of the uh, the hoopty way, if you will, to uh, fade your colors. It's just rub them with your finger and then you look really strange when you go out to eat afterwards. I haven't done a pike fly in a while, that'd be fun. Aaron always laughs at me. So I'm going to start by going in and we're going to put in just some dots. This is kind of the fun part where you get to be creative. Honestly, the fish never sees this. Um, so it's really, you're doing this for you. Um, We'll do a couple of different colors in here. And you can, air, if you have the airbrush kit, you can do a whole mess of other cool stuff. But since not everybody has that, and I'm out of air, we're going to go standard old school style. So I like the, the Copic markers because you get the two tips, allows you to do different stuff. Yep, exactly. You got it. Super helpful for pulling legs through. Sometimes you'll get done with the fly and you'll be pulling through legs and you'll just smush it right into the hook and you can throw off your trajectory and nobody wants their trajectory to be thrown off. I mean, it just makes for a rough day. Like I said, this is really just for your own pleasure. Unless this fly goes upside down, 
So you get this really cool overall look. More, more! Needs more dots. <laughs> hey, I like dots. I was having fun there. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my my bodkin, I call it a needle, and I'm gonna insert <laughs> at like a 45 degree forward angle, kind of reaming out the inside of this popper. I need a thirty dollar compressor. So let me make sure I'm at the right. Ah! Needle down, needle down. Yeah, I was. I almost went and bought one before the show. I was like, then I realized it was 5:45, and despite how heavy my feet are, I wasn't gonna make it back. So I'm gonna take uh, some 40 pound mono, and I burn the end of it like we would uh, if we were making like a crustacean ice. You can see I have a little ball up there. And we take the little ball section here. We're going to jam it, move it down into that hole. So that'll actually start and become a weed guard. You just want to let it set up for a second. If you're pulling this over lily pads, it's a good idea to have a weed guard. If you're not, and you're fishing the edge of lily pads or the edge of a weed line, go sans weed guard. But if you're tying them, you can always just rip them off, you know, or cut them out. So it gives you a nice, solid weed guard to drag over there. Um, it's pretty non-invasive too. Um, last but not least, I'm going to use soft head. It dries clear, looks super milky um, initially, and I do about two to three coats of this typically. Um, you can completely get away with one, and if your marker's completely dry, you can kind of get away with really working over your dots because you don't want to take dots away because Ebers wanted more dots, more dots, more dots. So we don't want to disappoint people. But I just put in a copious amount. And this will dry 100% clear. It'll, you know, I'll put it over the legs pretty heavily. Not worried about it. Kind of will actually help stabilize those little arms out too. If you so desire, it kind of runs out there anyways. Then I simply just rotate the popper head all the way around. And I like to put these on a dryer. More dots. <laughs> we'll try fire. Maybe that'll get it to clear up faster or dry. Probably not. I was kidding. But it's non flammable, so you could. Um, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. 
So as you can see, as it starts to dry in some of the thinner spots that I did, um, it'll turn 100% clear, which is what that has on it. Um, because it is an elastic material, <laughs> exactly, exactly, more dots, more dots, more dots. So I'm making a note here because I'm a good note taker. Hex and a crappie fly. Scott, do you have a lot of wind where you're at? I did fill the tank. I don't know how it's going to work with either of these patterns. I think it's pretty uh, minimal as far as seeing a popper in the tank. But you can see it starts to dry. Different places are drying a little bit quicker. So, but I do have a full tank and this beast from last week that we needed to swim that I was horrible and didn't swim it properly and wasn't prepared and so forth. Uh, I coated the popper with um, with soft head from Loon. Um, it's a non caustic styled uh, it's basically like, uh, what is that stuff called that makes your whole house stink? Softex. Um, it's like an environmentally friendly Softex replacement. And it works really well. It has like a rubbery type finish. Do, I, do they make a diver type head? Great question. So the beauty of the Flyman head. And I'll try to explain this. Um, so if you tie it this way, it's a popper, okay? If you tie it that way, upside down, so that this smaller lips up, it'll like dig in, and here I'll zoom out so you can see. So now it'll it'll basically dig in to the water, so it'll create, um, you know, not a lot of wind. Okay, um, I was going to say if you dead drift stuff under an indicator with the wind, it could create some really cool action. Um, but it'll dive. Now, let me see. I'll grab another hook here. It's not the hook I want. Here we go. No, Rob, I'll, I'll do a pike fly. I only do two a week, so you might have to wait. More materials to, to, to buy any? Uh, absolutely. Um, so if you tie the fly this way, if that makes sense, let me see if I can get it. So everything's, you know, this is the this is the front of the fly. All your stuff's out here. It'll actually dive. It creates a diver head. Um, so it actually can be put on a hook three different ways, which is pretty slick. I will do a pike fly. I promise you, my friend. Man, I almost feel like that streamer from last week is nearly a pike fly. Let's see here. Alright, I am going to... Thanks for the coding info. <laughs> no worries. Oh yeah. So this sets up, it's really soft. Um, time between coats, as you can see, as we look at it now, you can see it's starting to dry. I give it like 10 or 12 minutes. Nothing too wild. Whoa! I'm trying to get this pike, this streamer beast to swim tonight. There we go. Perfect. Let me see if I can uh, not just turn off the camera. It's not really just a static swimming bait, but it's more done on the pole. So this isn't the popper. This is the fly from last week. It's catching a little bit of weird current. But you can see there's just a ton of really cool action as the flows change.
but you can see a really cool articulation designed to be pulled through water not so much a riffle but really cool action if you guys didn't see this one last week you can go back it should be up on the live stream and uh, should be there whoa alright so we'll get to a pike fly I'll put that on the list look it here we go I'll be professional we'll put a little box checks check marks the Apollo 13 limb check there we go we've got our request going we're looking good I love, I love the more materials to buy. Honestly, there's always more materials to buy. Um, there's always something new, exciting, and fun coming out um, that you just have to have to get in on. Craig, no problem, man. My pleasure. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see, make sure I didn't miss any comments. I did a live stream with the uh, Fly Lords last night on their Instagram. And Instagram live streams are way more wild. You guys are so nice and respectful. I appreciate it. I was like trying to keep up and it was pretty funny. Absolutely, Mark. It's a. Uh, it might have to go fish with myself and Mr. Hogan Brown. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I appreciate you tuning in. And yeah, we're going to get you dialed in. Um, don't have a. Let me check my calendar here. I want to make sure I'm not uh, going to cause any trouble. Let's see. July is the next time that we meet. First Thursday is a 6th, so I'll probably be around. Um, and, yep, 6th and the 20th of next month, like our, like our meeting dates. Um, should be cool. If you guys follow me on Most Stuff Wins. <laughs> What's new and exciting coming from Loon? Lots of things. I have a full bag of tricks, some of which are super ready to uh, get out there, and uh, some other ones that will uh, will release everything on here. Actually, typically, if you watch Loon Live, you'll see everything that's brand new, um, probably first. Um, thanks, Edward. Appreciate it. Scott, thank you. Most stuff wins. Absolutely. I win. I have lots of stuff and things. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be at iCast. If you guys follow me on Instagram, um, I'll be walking around with very, you know, some appointments and stuff, but uh, checking out all the cool new stuff. Thanks, Bernard. Nate, thank you much. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to go wrangle some kids to bed and then uh, try to go fish. So have a great night and take care. We'll see you next time. Okay.